Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media here, and today we're doing another roundup, another monthly reviews roundup, this time for April, even though we're almost at the end of May. We're going back and uh, giving a little score, giving a little review, a little rating of all the projects that I listened to uh, in April. That could be a mixtape, an album, an EP, whatever it is, so let's uh, hop into it. Up first, we've got Mayor Levi's Shift EP, uh, a little more on the grand side of things. Uh, this EP is a slight cut above your standard EDM EP. Uh, this project in no way feels phoned in or kind of half-assed, a common sentiment that I feel in most commercial EDM, at least in that realm. Uh, but with sprawling drops and uh, easy to process hooks, this EP is a good listen to in any context. And I'm gonna give it a bow tied seven out of 10. Uh, and then we've got Ellie Goulding's Higher Than Heaven. Uh, with bright electropop synths and strong vocals, Ellie Goulding's uh, fifth studio album is yet another solid one for the archives. Well, not her best of all time, this is easily her best, uh, most fulfilling project in the last decade. And with that, she will score a bow tied 7 out of 10. Now we've got Memba's Union EP. Uh, Memba truly does not miss for me personally. Their tribal trap production is hard to beat as they continually find new ways to innovate their sound, design, and style. Uh, each track on this EP offers a unique sound while staying true to the core of what Memba offers. And they will score a bow tied 9. Uh, next up, we've got NF's Hope. Um, yeah, this album is a bit of an oxymoron. In one song, the man is pouring his heart out about his struggles and pain. The next, he's rapping about his success and that his confidence is at an all-time high. Uh, without the contradictory narratives, the production is just his cookie-cutter cinematic beats and barely comparable trap uh, production. Ultimately, this album has no cohesion, no weight behind it, and is really nothing new. NF needs to reinvent himself and badly. And this is going to score Bowtied 3. Up next, we've got Zensei's Destination Heartbreak. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, his brand new debut LP. As a large consumer of this trip chill style of production, this album just felt a little bit lacking to me. I understand that the genre is minimalistic by design and the tracks are meant to be more or less, or are meant to more or less fade into one another, but there really isn't a whole lot to differentiate this album from other projects like it. Uh, it's solid escapism or background music, but that's pretty much it. Up next, we've got Mitchell's Form Follows Function, another debut LP. Uh, Mitchell's debut album has everything I expected and wanted. Uh, this album melds together the sounds of raw instrumentation, plucky synths, and excels in its Indietronica sound design. Uh, with Mitchell's own ethereal vocals packaged within a short, easily digestible track list, uh, Form Follows Function is a trip-hop lover's dream. And this will score a bow tied 7. Uh, then we've got Crank Dat's Slaughterhouse. Uh, this EP is where <laughs> um, all the robot pigs go to die, I should say. Uh, it is fully embracing his mechanized Electro House sound design. Uh, this EP does not pull any punches. Uh, that being said, I don't think this is... This is this this style of Crank Dats is his finest, I should say. Uh, many of the sounds overpower one another and meld into conglomerate of mush. Uh, the synths aren't overly pleasing and tend to sound like uh, tend to sound like many other soundscapes out there in the bass scene. So, uh, with that, I will give it a bow tied six. Then we've got Troy Boy's Say Less EP. Uh, undoubtedly, this is Troy Boy's worst, I would say. The production is bland, the beats are basic as hell, and the most interesting part of the EP uh, are the most hard to listen to. Uh, this seriously feels like a far cry from Troy Boy of the past. Not sure if he threw the towel in for this one, uh, but this isn't it, Chief. Uh, it will score a bow tie to three. I've got Everything But The Girl's Fuse album. Uh, this is my first experience with Everything But The Girl, and I thoroughly enjoyed what I heard. The mix of down-tempo, deep house, and forward, uh, vocal forward tracks, I should say, uh, make this record both deeply relaxing and thought-provoking. And this gets a bow tied seven. Uh, then we got Tiesto's Drive. Uh, in a shocking twist of fate, uh, the most commercially friendly, easily digestible tracks in this album uh, are the best ones here. Uh, for sure, a wide-reaching project that, um, yeah, I don't know, there are a bunch of surprises and solid cuts here, but I never thought I would say that a Tiesto and Black Eyed Peas song uh, or collab would be the best song on this record, which I thought personally, I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, but while all the tracks here are listener-friendly, there are too many just carbon copy slap house tracks uh, for this album to be all too exciting. Uh, but at the end, it will get a Bowtied 6. Uh, then we've got Tynan's Oddball EP. This EP really isn't taking itself too seriously, and I kind of love that about it. Uh, the tracks are silly, the production goes hard, and it's just an overall enjoyable listening experience. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to revisit this project a whole ton, but damn, if I hear this live, I will lose my mind. 
Uh, we got Virus Syndicate's uh, Sick World. And all I have to say is, uh, Virus Syndicate, guest feature, disciple. Blah. And that's my review. Uh, this is score of Bowtie 5 out of 10. And then we've got Chimes Aetherborn. Of all the debut albums in the world, Chimes might be one of the best. Uh, exploring the world of his own fostered subgenre of color bass, uh, Aetherborn will go down as one of the best dubstep albums of this decade. As a continuously flowing record, Chime takes the listener on a journey through digital space. Uh, the mixing is top notch, the sound design is fresh, and it's all wrapped in a style uh, brought to life by Chime himself. Uh, the future bass, or this is the future of dubstep, I should say. Uh, this is the future of melodic dubstep in particular. And uh, this is score bow tied eight. And then we've got Diplo. Uh, Diplo presents Thomas Wesley Chapter 2, Swamp Savant. Uh, Diplo's second endeavor as Thomas Wesley uh, is at, at least it showed like a little bit more life than the first did. Um, although with a track list that is cut in half, I can only imagine he put that much more time into making uh, these few songs that much more digestible. Well, sort of. It Kind of worked. I don't know. Uh, this is, <laughs> it's not a great record, and at least it showed it had some signs of life compared to the first one. And it will score bow tied 4 out of 10. Then we've got G-O-L with G-O-L 2. It, this time it's personal. Uh, Couch Run and Pasha's second run at G-O-L is a huge improvement from the first. Embracing more of a hip-hop style, G-O-L 2 is a quick hit of truly gritty uh, and guilty pleasure tracks. It will score bow tied 7. And we've got Ganja White Knight's Unity. Uh, at times an acid-infused Arabian dance records and other times grimy dubstep, Unity is overall an album with uh, cohesion and a little bit too long-winded. Um, while I appreciate the added length at the end of the day and age where songs are getting shorter and shorter, the extended tracks uh, add a length and additional movements throughout that offer little to no variation across the project as a whole. Uh, this album really benefited from its production features, and I think it would have been lost without them. Uh, but it will score a bow tied six. Then we've got Elenium's Elenium album. Uh, Elenium's fifth studio EP is, or album I should say, is a lot more of the same uh, and a poorly executed different direction, I would say at the same time. Uh, many of the kind of classic Elenium uh, tracks on this record feel like the same copy-pasted production underneath the new vocalist. Uh, well, on the other hand, his, uh, his new most recent uh, approach to the melodic pop rock fusion has only fallen flatter. Uh, there are hints of life shadow throughout the track list, but you'll be hard pressed, hard pressed to find many. And it was Gory Bow Tide 5 out of 10. Then we've got Jesse Ware's That Feels Good. Uh, the modern queen of disco, Jesse Ware's That Feels Good, is an uplifting, positive thinking, and brilliantly written LP. And if it's not the funny quips throughout that will keep you engaged, the shimmering production surely will. It'll score a bow tied 7 out of 10. And our final album, final project of the month, is Medicine's Always in a Hurry. Uh, Always in a Hurry is the, the return of Medicine's more aesthetic, chilled-out production. With a heavy emphasis on the kit and brass instrumentation, this record is a fusion of underground electronica and late-night jazz. It'll score a bowtied 7. But uh, that has been it. That has been the projects that I've covered this month. Let me know what you think of these albums, these EPs. If I miss anything, leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. But other than that, uh, I've been Dakota for Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.